grace and hope and eternal mercy. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you this day, now and forever, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Ling Young and Judy Wayne found themselves in an unimaginable place on September 11th, 2001. They were on the 78th floor sky lobby in the south tower of the World Trade Center, waiting for an express elevator to take them to the ground floor. At 8.46 a.m. on that fateful day, American Airlines Flight 11 had hit the North Tower. And like many others that day, Young and Wayne thought that a tragic airline accident had occurred and that they were being evacuated merely for safety precautions. And then at 9.02 a.m., just 16 minutes after the North Tower fell, the world changed. Not just for Wayne and Young, but for all of us, as we realized that this was not an accident, but an attack. At that moment, United Flight 175 slammed into the South Tower slicing through a majority of the 78th through the 84th floors. And in an interview with Tom Rinaldi for ESPN's Outside the Lines, Young recalled how one moment she was talking casually with other people waiting for the elevators, and the next moment, the building literally exploded around her. Young says she found herself in shock as she cleaned the blood from her glasses and tried to make sense of what she was seeing. Young and Wayne had survived the plane's impact, but hundreds of their co-workers sadly had not. Young says that she was afraid to move because she felt like the floor was going to collapse under her at any minute. Those who remained on the 78th floor sky lobby were frozen with fear. When all seemed lost, Young said, all of a sudden a young man appeared out of nowhere wearing this red bandana. And in a cool, calm voice, said that he had found the stairs. He told them, follow me. Help others if you can. Badly burned, Young and her fellow survivors obediently followed the young man who was carrying a woman on his back. The young man in the red bandana led the band of survivors down the stairs to the 64th floor where they met firefighters who would take them down to working elevators on the 40th floor. And when they reached the 64th floor, Ling Young says she witnessed the most compassionate and loving act that she has ever seen. Instead of following the group down the stairs to safety. She said that the man in the red bandana went back up the stairs. Judy Wayne was not with the first group of survivors that made it down the stairs. She was waiting back on the 78th floor in severe pain with a broken arm, a cracked rib, and a punctured lung. Her experience of those frightening moments after the attack on the World Trade Center, which she would share with her husband Jerry later that day, mirrored those of Ling Young. Wayne said, I saw a young man appear out of nowhere, 
I watched him as he went around helping people, putting out fires and administering aid to the injured. He said to everyone, Everyone who can stand, stand now. If you can help others, do so. Wayne only saw the eyes of the young man because he was wearing a red bandana over his nose and mouth to protect him from the smoke. Wayne and Young made it safely out of the South Tower before it collapsed at 9.59 a.m. 15 years ago today. Thanks to the nameless hero in the red bandana. That man would be an unforgettable face for Young and Wayne until May of 2002. When Allison Crowther discovered a startling revelation in a New York Times article about 9-11 survivors. Young and Wayne had both been interviewed for the article, and they both mentioned how they were miraculously saved by a man wearing a red bandana. Allison Crowther told ESPN that when she read those words, she knew that she had finally found her son. Wells Crowther was a 24-year-old equities trader. Wells grew up in Nyack, New York, with the Manhattan skyline as a backdrop. As a young boy, he developed a close bond with his father, Jeff. The symbol of that bond was a red bandana. Wells' mother, Allison, recalls that one day, Jeff sat Wells down, like fathers and sons often do, folded a white handkerchief, and put it in Wells' breast pocket. He then took out a red bandana and put it in Wells' hand. Then Jeff said, patting Wells' chest pocket, this one is for show, and then motioning to the red bandana, and this one is for blow. From that day on, Allison said, Wells was never without his red bandana. When he turned 16, Wells became a volunteer firefighter with Empire Hook and Ladder Company No. 1 in Nyack and served there wearing his red bandana until he went away to school at Boston College University. At BC, Wells always wore his red bandanas under his lacrosse helmet. Although he was one of the smallest guys on the field, Wells quickly became the vocal and physical leader of his team. Tyler Jewell, an Olympic snowboarder and teammate of Wells' at Boston College, remembers fondly how Wells used to lift the spirits of those around him. He says Wells was just there for everybody and anybody. Wells was the first guy to pat you on the back if you didn't have a good game and always with a smile. After graduating from BC in 1999, Wills took a job with Sandler, O'Neill, and partners and settled into his office on the 104th floor in the South Tower of the World Trade Center. And on September 11, 2001, Wells Crowther, like Ling Young, Judy Wayne and thousands of others found himself in an unimaginable situation. He was faced with a life or death decision, and he chose life, not his own, but the lives of others, both friends and strangers alike. If he hadn't come back, I wouldn't have made it, Judy Wayne told Greg Bothello of CNN. People can live a hundred years and not have the compassion, the wherewithal to do what Wells did. Wells' mother reflects fondly when she says, I'm so proud and gratified that Wells had the strength of character, the courage, the sense of duty, 
to help others. There is no greater love, Jesus says, than to lay down one's own life for that of another. I don't know what Wells believed, whether he considered himself a Christian or not, but in the last hour of his life, And with the last breaths that he took in this world, he was Christ-like in his actions and a living example of Christ for those whom he saved. Wells' body was found in March of 2002 in the basement of the South Tower alongside firefighters and other emergency workers. He had served to the very end, wearing his red bandana. Wells was not the only one to lay down his life for his fellow brothers and sisters on September 11, 2001. There are hundreds of other stories of heroism that can be shared from that tragic day. Wells' story, however, is a fitting example of the tremendous power of love and sacrifice. Wells gave up his own life so that people like Ling Yang and Judy Wayne could continue to live. Jesus Christ gave his life on the cross so that all of us may have eternal life. Wells' sacrifice was a last act of love. Christ's sacrifice, the ultimate gift of love. May we never forget either of their sacrifices. And from them learn to genuinely love and accept one another. Our friends, our enemies, our neighbors and strangers, that we might build the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven based on love and love alone as God calls us to do. May we never forget. Amen.